Greetings to the NEM community around the world. This is a new broadcast of NEM Español, the YouTube channel that brings you, mainly in Spanish, every relevant thing that happens in the NEM blockchain ecosystem. I'm your host, Alexis Trujillo. We live in times of interacting crowds. Modern states have adopted systems able to know in a citizen's identity by biometric footprint, claiming the preservation of security, but debates have been initiated in many places as to whether it's also an invasion of individuality. There are non-governmental organizations that lead the debate and want to bring governments, civil society and the business sector together for a consensus using new technologies such as blockchain. Blockchain for Europe is one of them. And Jinsk.com more dedicated to the citizen and consumer's identity issue. These two organizations have joined forces in a project that could bring ease to the problem, Defined.id. In this project, NEM Catapult has been chosen as the engine of a structure that validates personal identity documents for the benefit of the citizen and converts them into useful information that can be used by the third parties he decides. And we have here two very important figures of our NAM ecosystem, Christoph van der Egg and Jack Deans. Christoph is our former, our former interim president of the NAM Foundation, and nowadays is representing us in in Europe, in the, in in Europe. And Jack Deans, Jack Deans is the CEO of Deans.com, and is one of the uh, uh, of the top persons speaking about the fine ID. Welcome to Name Español. Thank you. Also, hi, Alexis. Uh, hello, uh, Christoph, and uh, especially hi to the very brave community of Name. Thanks for uh, thanks for having us, and uh, it's great to uh, to talk to you again. Uh, it's uh, always good to see the content you're producing for the for the Name community. No, no, man. It's a pleasure. It's all, it's all mine to, to, to see you, to see you both. And speaking of that, how comes you two met each other in this blockchain environment that involves blockchain and privacy? Yeah, actually, should will you tell Jacques or should I tell? It's it's no, Christophe. Yeah, I think that you can make the right story there from Holland. Uh, so uh, we actually first met in Vilnius when I was uh, at the blockchain center at the opening of the blockchain center in Vilnius and I did a short presentation and after the presentation Jack walked up to me and said like hey I'm from Belgium too uh, we should you know we should take an opportunity to, to talk once uh, because I'm working on something we're doing time stamping uh, with Ethereum and things like that and I said like well yes of course uh, I'm more than happy to uh, to talk to you, and uh, let's keep in touch. And um, we actually met in Belgium, and Jacques showed me the, the things they're working on with Cheese, uh, which is a, a encrypted cloud solution. And uh, basically, from like gradually, this whole uh, relationship started to build a little bit more until Jacques told me that they were interested in building a, an identity solution. And uh, he, by that time, already knew that I was very enthusiastic about you know like i i value um self-sovereign identity and basically distribute uh this these centralized identity solutions much so that's uh, more or less how uh we got into defined id and from one thing came another and, and that's right because jack is one uh, uh is, is one very important person in speaking about identity in uh, uh, in Europe, he is a score in the in the Louvain University, right, uh, Jack? You mean about uh, identity uh, in general? Well, I think for sure everything starts from yourself, from your birth certificates, from your identity, and uh, somehow, um, yeah, everything starts from there. If you can manage that on a proper way, on a very um, legal proven way on a very unique way um, that's a big challenge and I think uh, this is a, a challenge that was there from the first computer systems how you can log in how you can prove uh, who you are but they're very particularly uh, is one of the areas let's say where it's very uh, it's very evident that uh, blockchain has to play a very important role 
you are 18 years plus, born, whatever, and next in life can be blockchain and can prove your identity. So actually, what I, if I can add to this very shortly, Alexis, what I tell people um, regularly is that, you know, with the, when, when the internet came up, we started doing more interactions in a digital way, you know, without physical interactions. And this created all kinds of problems. So when initially we started doing um, you know, like e-commerce, things like that, yeah. um, now we are very dependent on that, but also we have e-government services, things like that. And basically um, we rely on all these digital transactions and interactions more and more. But uh, this also makes it much more important that we have a solution that ensures integrity of your identity much more than you know ever before and that's uh, that's why i think you know uh, identity solutions linked to blockchain are so important where blockchain can actually um, help provide trust and decentralization and where the, the the extended use of cryptography and things like that can actually ensure privacy and and other now we're speaking uh, about, about privacy. How would blockchain help to preserve my identity? How would it help me to keep my, my, my data just mine or shareable with whomever I want? Well, from a, from a privacy perspective, blockchain doesn't really help, but self-sovereign identities are not just about using blockchain. Self-sovereign identities, um, they rely on blockchain to, to record specific transactions, but um, from the design itself, it's a, basically it's a, pr a privacy by design system. And um, because nothing is really linked on the blockchain, you, have, uh, you, know, you can have pseudonymous identities and things like that, and there's a lot of obfuscation that's involved with it. And as a result, uh, because of the way it's, um, it's constructed, it's actually able, you're actually able to uh, ensure privacy while still enabling people to use their identities for multiple things. In most cases don't really necessarily need blockchain, but the cool thing is that you can add blockchain on top of that. Okay, now Jack, okay, is that the, the way that, that jeans.com is working? Yeah, well, we also have some kind of a history. So we started with the concept in 2014. Uh, we were adapting concepts, technologies. I think blockchain is, uh, is a very important uh, one of them. What we started to build is like your private space. So you can keep your data private. We have encrypted uh, cloud solutions, uh, zero knowledge as good as we can. Um, so we were looking how also you can reach out with your profile and how you can say I'm interested in this or in that without the other party knowing. So the whole anonymization. So you decide yourself uh, when you want to open up yourself. I think that's that's something very important. It's also some some of the things that's stopping uh, quicker implementation of IT solutions because people sometimes are really afraid uh, for their privacy. And typically you see that in uh, even older uh, generations. So we started to, to, to work from there. We started from a vault. You keep your data, you open up. And on the other hand, we have uh, cooperation uh, tools where people can over the internet uh, work together on a very safe and private uh, way. Uh, GDPR came later and was in fact, because we made everything from the start, privacy by design, uh, so GDPR made for us a very nice opportunity. GDPR is politicians say to the companies, please be aware you have private data of our citizens. Uh, so, um, but I think that makes really also an opportunity for new kind of uh, business models, new concepts. And I think also that's a very nice marriage with, with blockchain technology in, in general.